a talk about a cybernetic eye with uh, basically talking about file formats and standards. So you made my job very, very hard. Um, yes, shame on you, sir. Uh, so yes, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, way of organizing neuroimaging data. And basically, um, neuroimaging, human uh, cognitive and clinical neuroimaging at the moment is in a stage where generating data is relatively easy and relatively popular. Uh, so we're talking about thousands of publications published every year in fMRI alone, and that doesn't include structural scans such as diffusion or anatomical. And it turns out that many, many of these studies um, are very similar in terms of the type of data they export, the type of data they produce. Um, there are differences in experimental design. They address different questions, uh, but in bulk, there is a brain, it's put in the scanner, and there is data outputted. And we in neuroimaging uh, are blessed with actually having some pretty commonly used file formats. Uh, and it's not just the DICOM, but it's also the nifty file format that is supported by a vast majority of uh, uh, software packages. So what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that everyone doing an experiment and, and uh, obtaining this data um, is arranging them and describing them in a different way. And that actually even happens within a lab. You can have multiple uh, PhD students, multiple postdocs in the same lab, and they treat their data in a different way. And why is it a problem? Well, basically, uh, if you are a PI and you want to hand over a data set acquired by a PhD student a few years ago to a postdoc to address a different question, you might be in a pickle because that data set will not be described very well because the student didn't follow any instructions or any specification because there was none. It's also hard for writing software that would automatically analyze the data. Uh, there's a lot of manual uh, uh, labor when you have to uh, specify different metadata about the, uh, the, the data set. And um, it's also a bit difficult to figure out if there's something missing if you don't know the structure of it. So we decided to try to address this problem uh, by proposing something called BITS, which is brain imaging data structure, which is nothing else as a specification, a formal specification of arranging uh, results of a, a human neuroimaging experiment, think MRI. Um, and we had certain principles, where well, maybe before we go to principles, let me tell you who is it for. As I said, it's for PIs, so you tell your students how should they arrange the data so you would be in control and you would know that you can transfer it between the people in the lab as well as share it with your collaborators or even, God forbid, publicly. Um, you can also uh, build workflows, so it's for work of developers, so they would know what to expect and what expect certain organization of the data. And uh, last but not least, it's also for database people, so it will be easier for them to import existing data sets into uh, more structurized data. Um, and we have certain principles. So first of all, adoption is crucial. We want to make a specification, a standard, uh, a recommendation that would be for everyone. We want it to be simple, and we want to it to follow certain practices that are already out there. We also don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to come up with a new file format that is superior to everything else, but you know, no one actually cares about it. Um, we also want to keep it very simple. So we noticed that in the community, a lot of people are working with files, and a lot of labs, many labs, cannot afford maintaining a, a server for a database. Um, and a lot of people in the field are actually not um, very advanced in terms of uh, most recent standards. So you want to keep it simple. Uh, we also want to capture 80% of existing designs instead of trying to make everyone happy. So this is the implementation we came up with. I'm only going to go through certain major rules. Uh, you can read about it at the website I'm going to show at the end. Um, Basically, we encode a lot of data in the folder structure because that's what people do right now. We just make it more formal. So depending on what, how the file is called, then you will quickly realize which subject did it come from, which session did it come from, what kind of modality is it, what kind of task is it. Uh, we also used uh, 
uh, comma separate, sorry, tab separated values for tabular data, uh, and we use JSON for uh, key value stars. And we use the aforementioned Nifty because it's so well supported by, uh, by existing software. Uh, we have some exceptions. There are some, some legacy file formats for B values and B vectors that we also use and, and break the rules of using uh, tab separated values, but that's because we want to have this data ready to be processed uh, and ready to be used by software. Um, and also, it's extensible. So if there's something that is not covered by the standard, we uh, allow the researcher to add the files the way they want. Uh, and in the future, we're going to extend the specification. Um, so we support multiple sessions or visits, um, uh, as well as different acquisition types, different modalities, different types of field maps, structural data, diffusion data, functional data, resting state, um, so on and so forth, together with uh, sufficient metadata to process it. So we basically looked at different uh, types of metadata that are necessary to be able to, for example, do field unwarping using uh, uh, field maps and different types of field maps. And we added in the specification, if you want to use field maps, you need to add, uh, for example, effective uh, eco spacing um, and things like that. We also support behavioral data on different levels. So you can describe your subject in a population level, for example, you know, these people had this age, uh, but you can also have a multi-session uh, scenario when you had a measurement every session, and then you can attribute different measurements at every session. So I can show you how it looks like. Um, we have this fairly simple and intuitive file folder organization, and you probably noticed that there is some redundancy there, uh, and that is uh, uh, by design. So we did want to have in the file name, for example, every file and does encode which subject does it come from, and that prevents from accidental uh, confusion and basically mixing this functional scan of this subject from another subject. Uh, we tried to make it as clean as possible, uh, and the whole process involved uh, talking with the community. Uh, okay. Uh, and this is how we encode tabular data. So this is an events file. So for example, for functional MRI uh, data set, we have to encode what actually happened during this scan. So what kind of stimuli was presented uh, and what kind of uh, response was given from the, from the subject. And that is nothing less than basically two columns. We, we tell when something happened, for how long did it happen. And then we give uh, people the uh, flexibility of adding any given number of columns uh, that can encode other things, for example, response time or, or, or strength of a response and, and things like that, or maybe a label of a trial. We give people flexibility, and that allows actually to encode lots of different designs. Uh, and this is an example of a key value store, a JSON file that can encode certain uh, properties of the scan itself. For example, here we have the repetition time and eco time and flip angle, things that you would usually want to know about the um, uh, scan. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. And we are following the, the naming conventions from DICOM here, so we also don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, and this is how a demographics files look like. And the keys to success of this project is, is basically to get everyone involved in it. So we had numerous different discussions. I, I tell you those are most exciting email exchanges you can get there when people argue about file names. It's just wonderful. Um, uh, we also build a validator. So whenever you actually tell your student to conform with this specification, they would have an easy to use web-based tool uh, that we just point to a folder on a hard drive and the tool will tell them, hey, this is, this is a valid bits data set, or no, it isn't, and you have to correct this and that. Uh, we also talk to developers, and you already have uh, some on board, building workflows that can benefit from this file organization uh, and make things uh, much easier to process. And we're talking about automated analysis, uh, CPAC, and IPipe, and others in the works. Uh, we also are talking to database uh, uh, developers uh, because it's actually a very, very good opportunity for them to import data. And that includes Loris, Coins, Citron, and many others. 
Uh, and I can give you a bit of a bigger picture why I actually spend so much time on like discussing how files should be called. Um, because we have this initiative at Stanford where uh, we're trying to improve reproducibility of, of neuroimaging uh, research. And in this initiative, uh, we would like to provide researchers with, with the most up-to-date uh, and uh, robust methods for analyzing data. Um, and the first step of that is actually to get the data into the system. And there's nothing easier, uh, nothing easy, nothing easier to, to to do than basically tell them how they should organize the data. So therefore, we are working on the specification uh, that will allow us to ingest the data into the system and then provide them uh, with uh, with robust methods of analyzing it. Um, of course, this is not just me uh, doing this. It's a it's a big group of specialists, and many of them are here. JP, Cameron, Nolan, and Dave, and many others. And if I were to try to list everyone, this slide would overflow. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to thank my home lab, the Poldra Lab, um, and the INC Data Sharing Task Force. And some of this work was also funded by the Arnold Foundation. But the take home message is go to this website, have a look, and let us know if, if, if you'd like to change something. And then I'm going to discuss. Thank you very much.